A man walks away when a tree like this one crushes the van that he's in. How much did Lexington spend keeping people safe during three NCAA tournament games? We've got that number coming up. The search for a wanted man came to an end tonight. We'll tell you where police found him. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon. We're tracking a disturbing case out of southern Kentucky tonight. A daycare owner in jail accused of abusing a child in Knox County. State police arrested 33-year-old Tracy Four this afternoon. Police say they received a report of a two-year-old being abused at Rainbow and Lollipop Daycare in Corbin. Four is now charged with criminal abuse. Coming up at 6, we'll have the latest on this investigation. A northeastern Kentucky man says he's lucky to be alive. During yesterday's storms, a massive tree fell on his van while he was driving. This is really something. He shot this eyewitness video that shows the destroyed van. Josh Howard says he was driving a jail ministry van for his church when the tree came crashing down in Ashland. Our Phil Pendleton talked to Howard about those terrifying moments. It's our top story at 5. Central Park in Ashland is now closed, mainly because of situations just like this. Massive trees down throughout the park, and Josh Howard says he was sitting in this park waiting to pick someone up when a tree just like this one came crashing down and crushed the van that he was in. Now, Howard says he was not hurt at all, but he tells me he had one of those your life flashed before you moments. He says it began with rain, then hail, then wind, and then the tree came down. At first, he didn't know what happened, and it wasn't until after that he got out and saw that he realized what had just taken place. The first four or five seconds, I didn't even know a tree had hit the van. I didn't know if I was up in the air in a tornado or what was going on. I just knew that the, the windows broke and there was hail coming in the van. And then I realized what happened, that the tree hit the van. And, and Howard is quick to tell you that he himself is a recipient of the same ministry that he is now a part of trying to help others. More on that coming up at 6 o'clock. But for now, in Boyd County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And a fund has been set up to help raise money for a new van for that ministry. Cleanup is just beginning in northern Illinois, where powerful tornadoes ripped through several communities. Two people were killed and nearly a dozen injured in the storms. Anna Werner is in Fairdale, Illinois, with the latest on the devastation. Every home in Fairdale, Illinois, is either damaged or destroyed. Because I just remember stuff hitting, falling. I didn't know what to think. And then finally, when it was over, the house was gone. Two people died, including a 67 year old woman who was preparing to leave for her daughter's birthday party. My mother in law, she, um, she didn't make it downstairs. Fairdale doesn't have a siren system. But warning alarms sounded in the nearby town of Rochelle. Twelve people rode out the storm in the basement of this restaurant. We pulled in here and ran inside. Got a couple of pictures of the tornado right across the street from us here. And the, man, the owner said, in the basement. And we went down in the basement. It took rescue crews 90 minutes to dig them out. The tornadoes cut swirling lines into farm fields and pulled homes from their foundations. Some of the rescuers were also victims. We went to work and, and helped the other people that needed the help, and uh, I got there this morning to 5 o'clock to see that my house was gone. Some are now salvaging what they can from the massive piles of rubble, hoping to rebuild their lives. Anna Werner, CBS News, Fairdale, Illinois. Although those tornadoes did not touch down in Kentucky, people living here are feeling the effects of the damage. Kelly Lassiter lives in Kentucky, but grew up about 45 miles away from Fairdale, Illinois. She has family and friends living in the area and had no contact with them for almost 24 hours. She was able to track what was going on through Facebook. My feed was full of people posting things and posting videos. My first thought was, I hope Uncle Don and my cousins are all okay, because I knew they were in that area. 
Lassiter says her family is safe and their homes were not damaged during those storms. We are finally getting some relief from the severe weather threat. The sunshine making a return to the bluegrass just in time for the weekend. Oh, we need to dry out. And it looks like this cool down will stick around for a while. So enjoy it while you can. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at that forecast, Chris. Yeah, I'm really happy to not be starting things out with tracking thunderstorms for a change. Instead, I'm tracking that dry weather blowing into town for the weekend, coming in on a cool northwesterly wind. Look at the numbers now 58 degrees in Lexington. Yesterday at this time, we were into the 80s, 60 into Frankfort, low and mid 60s across southern and southeastern Kentucky, where you're not as far removed from the cold front. It's what portions of uh, north central Kentucky are saying. There's a hint of a little cloud cover in Lexington right now, keeping that temperature down compared to some other areas. Life first alert defender, really nothing showing up. Not expecting a whole heck of a lot out there at any point over the next several days. Our live sky cams, a uh, little filtered sunshine showing up from Georgetown into Franklin County into parts of Richmond. Lexington cams showing our life first alert defender off. And you can see some of those ice crystal clouds that continue to show up right on on top of the area, though the farther north that we look, more in the way of blue skies and clear skies to the north and northwest. Focus of the forecast when I come back on a weekend break from the storms. Notice I say it's a weekend break from the storms. I've got the return of the boomers, guys, showing up in your hour by hour forecast as we go into early next week. That's coming up in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. Well, streets of Lexington look a lot different tonight than they did this time last week. Police and city leaders made it their mission to make sure everyone stayed safe during the NCAA tournament celebrations. But as our Victor Puente found out, the extra safety precautions come with a cost. The neighborhoods around UK have calmed down quite a bit since basketball season ended. A large percentage of the money Lexington spent during the NCAA tournament was focused on this area, making sure there were plenty of police to keep it safe. The Sweet 16, Elite 8, and Final Four games cost the city of Lexington more than $75,000. More than 48,000 of that was spent on police to help handle the large crowds at South Limestone and State Streets. A few thousand went to code enforcement, waste management, and 911. More than 10,000 went to the fire department who had to stay on top of several small fires. Streets and roads spent $6,700. They tell me that was for street sweeping and garbage pickup. Another 4,800 went to corrections who had to handle 69 arrests during those games. The amount the city spent is down from last year. That included a championship game. The city says they spent more than $150,000 during those four games. Police say despite all of the officers required to handle those crowds, it didn't impact how they police the rest of the city. We don't sacrifice any service to the public to provide an atmosphere for people to celebrate. All our other functions are functioning as they normally would during that day of the week. The majority of the arrests made during those games were for alcohol intoxication or disorderly conduct, sometimes both. Of the 69 people arrested, only seven were identified as UK students. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Earlier this month, Mayor Gray said the costs associated with the games were an investment because of the economic impact the university has on the city. The search for a wanted man out of central Kentucky has come to an end. The Casey County coroner tells us James Blakey was found dead this afternoon. Blakey was wanted on felony warrants out of Lincoln County. Police say Blakey threatened them and refused to surrender before running off earlier this week. His body will be sent for an autopsy to determine how he died. A well-known artist and Kentucky native is being remembered tonight. Ray Harm's family tells us he died last night. He'd been battling prostate cancer. Harm was known for his wildlife prints. His work received recognition in national newspapers, magazines, and documentaries. Ray Harm most recently lived in Arizona. He was 87 years old. The nice weather might have you thinking about yard work. Coming up, we'll tell you about an annual event that will get you ready for the outdoor season. And she inspired people across the country. Coming up on WKYT News at 530, how this college basketball player is being remembered.